Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the preset editor for the M-Audio Oxygen Pro. Now I apologize for the delay in videos. I've been working on a new studio space and I'm actually in that space now. Really excited to start piecing this together over time, but I've got more space. I can stretch out a little bit more and hopefully be able to do more for you guys, uh, including a new controller that I'll be unboxing really soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that when it comes out. But let's get back to this video. There are multiple versions of the preset editor. There's a version that corresponds with each variation of the controller. So there's the mini 25, 49, and 61. There's a preset editor specific to each of those versions. The reason being is because the layout and the controls are slightly different between the different variations of the keyboard and so the preset editor is built specifically for whatever size. So if you've got the 49, in my case I have the 25, make sure you download the right version for the controller that you have. Let's jump over to the computer, take a look at a few things, talk through the preset editor, and hopefully that'll get you on your way to building custom presets for your Oxygen Pro. Let's jump right into it. So over on my computer, you can get to the preset editor in a couple of ways. I'm gonna show you as if you've never downloaded this yet. So you're gonna go to the M Audio Software Manager. If you don't have this, go to the M Audio website, log in, go to My Products, make sure you've registered your controller, and you should see the Software Manager there. We're gonna open this up, and that's gonna open up the Software Manager, and this is where you can either download or if you've already downloaded and installed, you could open it up. If you don't see the preset editor, go up to the gear icon and make sure that show advanced software is checked. And then scroll down and you're gonna see, again, the different variations of the editor. So in my case, I have the Oxygen Pro 25 editor and I've already downloaded and installed this. If you haven't, click the download, go through the installation process there. In my case, I can just click open, which is gonna open up the Oxygen Pro 25 editor. Now keep in mind, I already have my controller plugged in, turned on uh, and connected to my computer. And you'll see when the editor opens up that we have a simple menu up at the top here with file and help. Help doesn't get you much right now. It's just the, the about the version, which is in my case one. And then file, you have four options or well, five with exit. You have the ability to send and retrieve presets from the controller. So that's what these first two options are. And then we also have the ability to save and load presets to and from our computer. So what's really nice here is you could actually back up the presets. Let's say we wanna modify the Pro Tools DAW preset. We could retrieve that from the controller. We could save that preset to our computer as a backup. We could make our modifications. We could send the preset back to the controller. And then later on down the road, if we wanted the original preset, we could hit load preset and we could open it up from our computer, send that over to the controller to replace what was there. The top menu aside, down here we have three main sections. So as you can see, we've got preset, DAW, and global. I'm gonna go through each of these with you and just talk about some of the functionality that's within each section. So first off in the preset section, we have all of our controls that relate more to the virtual instrument presets, or if we're controlling an external keyboard, maybe we've got the pad set up on to trigger specific notes or programs, that would be a preset. So as you can see, there's no transport controls here. We have things like the sustain pedal, we have the pitch and modulation wheels, the keyboard, all of our pads, knobs, and then some basic functions down here for our clock and our tempo, and then we also have our bank selects. So what we can do on any one of these is we can click to select and I could do that on any one of these controls and you'll see down at the bottom, it updates with the parameters you can set for that specific control. And these will change depending on which control you click on. For example, we're on the wheels, the pitch bend and the modulation wheel. For the pitch bend, you can set the min and the max levels and then the MIDI channel that that gets sent on. Modulation wheel, you can actually pick the CC note that this transmits, as well as our minimum and maximum values and the MIDI channel. Now I'm not gonna go through every single one of the controls because there's a lot here. So download this, play around with it, and see what you can change on each one of these controls. On the keyboard, for instance, we've got our zones here, so we can actually set up our zones very quickly from here, rather than doing it in the, the menu itself. 
We can change settings for the arpeggiator, the chord mode, scale mode, and then we can also change aftertouch settings all from here. So again, some of this functionality is taking it from your three line screen on the controller and moving that over to a user interface that's a little more friendly, easier to get around. And then when you're done, you can just send that preset over to the controller. So let's say you wanna take one of the presets that's in the controller, or maybe you've made some modifications on the controller and you wanna grab whatever's stored in the RAM. The way that we can go about this is up in the file, we can hit retrieve preset. And this is gonna perform different things, whether you're in preset DAW or global mode in the uh, editor. So if we hit retrieve preset in the preset section, you'll see that it says get preset from device. And we can either get it from the RAM, which is the, the memory that stores the settings on the, the controller, basically the settings that are currently there. So when you turn the keyboard off and back on, whatever's in the RAM is gonna load up. We could also retrieve presets one through 16 right here. And these are pre-built already in the controller. Uh, so if I hit preset one and I click get, it says it's been successfully retrieved. And you can see that it's MPCPI. And if I go and retrieve preset two, you'll notice preset name is hybrid. So these are the presets that come with a controller that line up with the virtual instruments that come with it. So hybrid, mini grand, some of those virtual instruments that come with it, they've given you presets there. So you could load those in, you can modify those, get rid of them if you want. I would recommend before you modify an existing preset, just get that preset, close the box, and then go to file, save preset, save that preset to your computer as a backup, then make your modifications. Who cares if you never need it, but if on the off chance you wanted to get that preset back, it would be a lot easier if you could just grab the backup you saved to your computer. You'll notice as I load presets that my pads up here change. So let me go ahead and retrieve a preset. Let's just grab preset four, which is for the velvet. And you can see that, you can see the colors of these pads. And if I click on one of these, I've got a lot of different parameters I can change for the pads, for example. Um, I can change whether this specific pad latches or doesn't, whether it repeats or not. So some additional functionality that you can get really specific on the specific controls that are a little bit harder to get from the three line screen on the controller. So I could go here and we've got two colors. Remember we have the color when you tap it and you have the color that when it's just sitting without being touched. So I could go ahead and change this to cyan and you'll notice the color changes here. The other thing that I could do is I could change the mode of this specific pad. So maybe I want this pad to trigger a program change. I could go to mode, change it to program, and then I could put the program number that I want that to trigger. And maybe this is sending to an external sound module, a external keyboard or something like that, that you wanna send a program change note to. You can do that right through here. Keep in mind that whether you're in preset or DAW mode, there's four banks and we can cycle between those four banks with the bank forward and back buttons on the keyboard. So again, inside the editor, you have the bank select. So I'm in bank one, but I've got four banks that I can cycle between. So there's a lot of capability here to customize a lot of different controls uh, for this keyboard. One other thing that you can set here that's really nice is on the sustain pedal, you can change whether latch is on or off. You can change the channel and the min max levels of the sustain. I haven't tried this out with a volume style pedal, um, but I'm wondering with the parameters I see here, if you could use that with this. Um, I know it says sustain on it, but you may be able to use another type of control pedal with this and change the settings that are sent here. So moving on from preset, I hope that gives you an, enough of direction that you can start to play around with this, start to customize this for your use. But let's move over to the DAW section and talk about that real quick. So as you can see, this changed up a little bit, right? We lost our keyboard here and we've got our transport controls and some of the more DAW centric controls that are on this keyboard. What we can do is we can retrieve preset and in this case, it's gonna retrieve whichever DAW we have picked on the keyboard right now. So if I retrieve the preset, it actually pulled in the GarageBand preset because that's the one that I had pulled up last. 
And then you'll notice that all of the controls change again. They update from whatever was set in the GarageBand DAW preset that came with the controller. I could change these. If I hit the stop button, I could change that mode from CC to program, Mackie, Mackie HUI. And then based on the mode, I could change some other parameters for that mode. On the pads themselves, in the mode, you can actually have them be, and, and you see in this case, it says same as preset. So whatever we have in our preset tab, it's going to carry over when we've got DAW mode turned on as well. We could change that. We could have this be a completely different trigger for our DAW modes. When we've got DAW mode turned on on the controller, then it would change what that pad does compared to whether we have preset mode on. So a lot of these you'll notice, they say same as preset. Uh, because they've got this set up so the transport controls work, the knobs maybe control a fader, but the pads control whatever note is set up on your preset setting. We also have the soft keys on the very right hand side of the keyboard, those round soft keys. You can change those settings. We have the banks, because remember, the pads, the knobs, if you've got the larger versions, the faders, those have four banks of controls. And then moving over to the global section, this is where you have some of the global settings that are inside the global menu in the controller, but it allows you to change those uh, right from this UI here. We could go to retrieve preset, it's gonna pull whatever our global settings are, and then we could change those, and then we could send those presets back to the controller, hit okay, and anything I had changed would have been sent back over to the controller. Again, a couple things to keep in mind. If you're gonna change a preset, whether it's a DAW preset or a regular preset on the controller, I would recommend backing it up first, then mess around with it. You can send you know, as many changes as you want to the controller to mess around with stuff and get it to work for you. And then just spend some time with this. You may have to look up your specific DAW and how you customize the controls for that DAW. Maybe it's a DAW preset that doesn't come with the controller. You wanna build one for it. You may have to look up the user manuals for that DAW and do a little homework to figure out how to customize the controls on the Oxygen Pro to control whatever DAW you're trying to get it to control. Same with an external keyboard. You may have to pull up the manual, look at the CC notes that are used to control various functions of the keyboard, and then use that to start build your mapping for your custom presets. If you've got questions, throw them in the comments below. I know I, you drank from a fire hose, I just threw a lot at you, uh, but I hope it was helpful in kind of steering you in the right direction as you start to build some custom presets for your controller. Thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music. Oh,